Hello everyone and welcome back to Darvel 20's Let's Play. This is episode 15. Uh, today, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do for you guys. I'm going to come up with a plan of some cool stuff to show you, that's for sure. Um, I'm probably going to wind up making some more UU Matter and try and get one of the first pieces of the Quantum Armor Set. The Quantum Armor Set has a lot of cool features. It does a bunch of neat different things. Uh, anybody who's familiar with Industrial Craft probably knows that. So, I'm going to get started by charging this guy back up again from my other MFSU. I'm going to work on getting some more scrap. I might even automate some scrap production, we'll see. And, uh, you know, there's maybe one or two more items I might want to check out. So, let me get ready and start building a plan for what I'm going to show you, and I'll be back shortly. Alright guys, one thing I want to do real quick, and this is pretty simple and fast, I think, is automate my scrap production. Uh, right now, as you guys have probably seen, I've got um, three recyclers over there. So, I don't like having to constantly run over to my recyclers, put items in, go back, back and forth. They run through those items very quickly. And uh, frankly, it's a nuisance having to keep refilling them and keep picking the items back out. So what I'd like to do is create a system, probably right here in this corner, because it can be pretty straightforward and simple. Let's lay down a chest. I am going to need another one of those, I believe. thought I had all my items in order before I started recording this. Obviously, I didn't. Also going to lower my volume a little bit. I've got a few macerators running. This is going to be my scrap chest. Uh, any junk I don't want or anything I want to turn into scrap is going to be placed in this chest. Okay. I will then want to probably... Let's try it like this. here like this. Nah, that's not really going to work, is it? I'm just trying to hide my wire. Hang on a second, let me find a good way to do this. Okay, let's see how well I can do this now. Without being a complete failure at this thing. I just lay down Maybe I'll reorient that later. Um, so what I'm trying to do here... need a couple more pipes. I knew I built more cobblestone pipe. And I'm also going to take one of my recyclers here. lay him down in the corner just like that and run my pipe to it. Now I've got it so that with Buildcraft, anything you want to go into your machines and be processed should go in the top. This works the same for furnaces if you're not using industrial craft or any items. Um, the top is where things are going to go in here. If you wanted items to go into this slot, you'd want to feed your pipes into the bottom of the machine. 
and anything you want to come out of this slot needs to be hooked up to the side of the machine. So, if we set this up like so... And then our chest. So this is a pretty rudimentary design. I might wind up building a room dedicated to automating some things. Um, this is kind of sloppy, actually. I could probably do better than this, couldn't I? Probably. In fact, I have an idea on how to improve this already. I'm just knocking stuff off, don't mind me. I think if I just do this... That should work, and that's a little bit more compact. Design, don't you think? Now I do need to get a one of these guys here, like so. But I'm wondering how that looks. That looks better, doesn't it? Oh yes, it does. Much better. So what am I missing here? I need to run power into this guy. He doesn't have any electricity going into him at the moment. So let's wire that real quick. And I also need to grab my build craft wrench. Because when I placed my wooden pipe, it didn't know where to orient. So now the wooden pipe is extracting properly. So items will come out of here, go into my recycler, and then any scrap that gets created will go in here. So just to test this, let's grab some dirt. I'm only going to put one stack in here for now, and it should automatically start emptying, and you'll see it going into my recycler. Pretty nifty. Recycler is going to fill up. Obviously no energy at the moment, so let's wire that. I'm going to make a mess of my floor for a moment. I forgot to get my cabling. So, remember how copper wire degrades over a long distance? That's not going to work too well for us because we do want to kind of move this cable all the way across the room. So our solution is to use more of this glass fiber cable. Um, obviously it uses a diamond, but to be honest with you, I'm not going to fret over one diamond use. So, that should be enough cables, I hope. And you'll lose one energy for every 20 cables that you lay, but like I said, not a big deal. Oh, right. Should have put it on low focus mode. That's alright. At least I found the edge of my house pretty quickly. So there's my recycler. Let's run our cable down. about it. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I just heard my recycler activate, so even better. And that's how you run wires under your floor. There's probably a more efficient way to do it, but... So I did connect it to this bat box, which is feeding off of the same line that these machines are on. Um, the only downside, like I said earlier, I think the other day I mentioned that um, this line doesn't have quite enough power to power all these machines at once. But honestly, a recycler really only uses one EU per second. I need to grab my EU reader to show you that. It might be drawing two through the line because of the energy loss. But let's see how that looks. Yeah, one or two EU per second isn't too bad. 
OK, guys, so you can see my machines are pumping here pretty nicely. If I wanted to be even more space efficient, which I'm kind of feeling like maybe I do, let's do something real quick to clean this up even better. Okay, I think that's even better. What do you guys think about that? Now, once I seal up this wall, it's a slightly more compact design and the same outcome. In fact, you don't even see one of those uh, one of those little engine guys. So what should happen now is as soon as I place some uh, any items in this chest, as a matter of fact, I can put anything in there, um, it'll start pumping out into my recycler. My recycler will mash it up and then it should make its way into my chest here. Heck, let's just watch for a moment and see if uh, anything starts to filter out. And as you can see, um, the recycler is keeping up with the amount of stuff coming in. So, I mean, that's a good sign. Um, because the recycler is so quick, it's uh, not going to have an issue. And you can see a piece of scrap just showed up, and it should filter out and into this chest. So now I don't have to manually feed my recyclers anymore. I can just kind of stick all my junk this chest and anything that goes in here will get recycled into scrap and then made into UU matter. So I've now got an automated recycler. Hooray! That means that I no longer need these guys. So I can go stick them in a chest somewhere. Might as well seal up my wall again. So just a little bit more of a build craft for you guys to enjoy. I'm going to clean up my inventory again and come up with something else to show you all. Okay guys, I just got back from a little bit of a mining trip, and I want to show you guys a neat little toy I'm going to build for you. So let's get a couple reagents here. Let's do any NCBU. And I am going to need some more copper cables. That's fine. A little bit of glowstone. Let's see how quickly I can put this together. Direwolf building for us now. You should be semi familiar with this recipe. Oh no, I'm out of wood. How does that even happen? here. I'm going to build a quick electronic circuit. Electronic circuit, bad box. What is he building? That's a good question. I'm going to upgrade this guy to an advanced circuit. Put him in there with the bat box, a couple pieces of iron, and a couple pieces of glowstone. What do we got? We've got the electronic jetpack. Nice. Uh, anyone who's familiar with Industrial Craft 1 will know that the um, original version of the jetpack you uh, had to fuel with uh, with a couple different forms of uh, resources. There was like a coal version. There was a you know there was a couple different ways to fuel your jetpack. It lasts about 90 seconds. That item still exists in Industrial Craft 2. However, um, it's been added a uh, electronic jetpack. Sorry, my computer uh, lagged out just a little bit there. So uh, let's check out this electronic jetpack. Um, you equip it in the um, armor body slot, same place you would have put your bat pack. Electric jetpack here. And let's see. Oh, just hit space as if you were jumping, and you'll start to fly a little bit. How neat is that? That is not too shabby. yesterday in my video when I said I hope I remember to move this stuff? Yeah, I didn't.
Okay guys, looks like things are behaving a little bit better now, so I'm going to push uh, H to turn on hover mode. Apparently with hover, hover mode you won't move quite as high, and you'll also descend a little bit slower. Things are looking a little bit choppy still, but that's okay. So, hover mode is cool, but yeah, this jetpack basically lets you fly around your map. It's very neat, very fun. Definitely recommend you guys make one. You can saw the uh, ingredients were rather cheap, and uh, because it's electric, you don't have to constantly make more fuel for it. You just stick it in your uh, MFSU and let it recharge and hang on to it. So there's some free flight for you guys. All right, so uh, that's the electric jetpack, and now let's move on to something else to check out. Well, looks like I have a problem. My, uh, if you pay attention to the side here, it does look like that the uh, redstone engine here that's pumping super fast at the moment is going faster and overwhelming my recycler. So items are building up on the side here and are getting wasted. So we have to resolve this somehow. Let me get ready to do so. Okay, guys, this is the type of situation where the extra build craft pipes mod comes in. I haven't featured too much of it, and I'm trying to remember off the top of my head how they work. I believe if I build, as if I were to build a, no, other way around. As if I were to build a cobblestone pipe, and put some redstone on top, you get an insertion pipe. Uh, this is an extra build craft pipe mod item. It's not part of the default build craft install. And the way this item works is, items going through a insertion pipe will first try and go into a machine, and failing to do so, they will go out another side. So let's move this guy. Oh yeah. Okay, that's not so bad. So uh, the way this works is now these two recyclers will both have items pumped out of them by the wooden pipes. Just want to make sure that they're both correctly... Yeah, they look good. And they'll go into the cobblestone pipes, which will go down here and up into the chest. So that should be working like a charm. Now one more pipe I need to put is this insertion pipe. So now the way this will work is the dirt should flow up here, hit this insertion pipe, and try and go into the first recycler. If the recycler is full, it should move on to the next recycler. If both of these recyclers are full, it should move its item back into this chest. So let's activate this guy now. And we should see these items start to fill up rather quickly. I'm actually going to go get a bit more junk to throw in there just to make sure it's working correctly. So I, w I didn't think the recycler would be able to keep up, or uh, I didn't think the uh, redstone engine would be able to keep up with the recycler, but apparently it does. So let me skip ahead to the point where this thing starts overflowing. In fact, I got a very smart idea on how to skip ahead to the part where this thing starts to re overfill. Overfill it myself. So now you can see, as that thing's overflowed, it's going to start putting items in here. See how that's working now? So that's the insertion pipe. Very nice, very nice item. And now both my recyclers are producing scrap for me. And you can see them coming out here. So let's seal this wall back up. And I've fixed the problem with my automatic recyclers. Uh-oh, did anybody catch my mistake? I just did, because I noticed I wasn't getting as much scrap as I expected to. I should have used an iron pipe instead of a cobblestone pipe. 
Remember the other day when I was showing you guys iron pipes and cobblestone pipes and all the differences? Well, look what's happening. Items are getting stuck over here because instead of going through this pipe and down, they're going through this pipe and sometimes back into this wooden pipe where they get stuck and hang out in no man's land. Not a good place to be. So if we just replace this guy with an iron pipe real quick. And that's not the direction we want things to go in. Now, my scrap should always go downwards. And I've fixed another problem with my automated machine. Much better. So I hope those have shown you how tricky these uh, build craft pipes can be. You really want to think about what you're doing before you lay it down, because it's very easy to mislay out your items here. Now, earlier today, I dropped a Lapatron crystal in here. Let's start making some more mass. I'm actually going to recharge this guy in my solar panels. Don't mind. well over there. See how useful scrap can be? Yeah, and the time it took me to walk over there, I had already pre-processed a whole ton of it. So I'm not going to make anything with the matter yet because I still don't have enough, but I'll get back to you guys shortly on what I'm going to make with that. Okay guys, I decided there's one more really cool item I want to show you. Um, this is a personal favorite of mine. I'm going to get started building it. Uh, the first thing I need is another MFSU. This is another item that can accept 512 energy units per second. Uh, the more energy you give it, the faster it operates. Uh, that's about all I'm going to tell you right now. So let me real quick make an MFSU. Hang on a moment. All right, about time, another MF, MF, MFS unit. Yep, I can speak tonight. Next thing I'm going to need to build, well, I guess I'm going to be tipping my hat a little bit with what kind of toys I'm about to make when you see the next item I put together. Ugh, I need two more circuits, goodness. Oh, am I for rubber? Wow, I still need more rubber. Let me get some more resources together with this rubber. I'm going outside to pick flowers. Might as well grab both. What do I need red flowers for? Good question. And here we go. Electronic circuit, advanced circuit, and redstone on the bottom yields... Dun -dun -dun -dun. TFBP empty. What's that mean? Well, anyone who's familiar with industrial craft will know. And if you're not familiar with industrial craft, you're about to find out, because I'm about to build the item I need to build. I believe I need a lapis block for this. Under a diamond, one of these, is that it? Ah, yes, that's the recipe I'm looking for. The terraformer. Nice. Uh, TFBP stands for terraformer blueprint, and there's a handful of them available. Uh, if we look in our recipe book here, you can see there's an irrigation one. What that does is it turns desert biomes into grassy biomes. There's a chilling one, which will turn uh, any biome into a uh, snow-covered biome. 
cultivation, which is the one you're going to see shortly. That's my favorite. Desertification, guess what that does. Flatification, guess what that does. Uh, desert turns the area into a desert, and flatification flattens an area out. Um, you can also place your cultivation, any one of these guys, directly in here, and you can always get your empty one out. So that's basically how you reset um, what your guy is. So let's make, with four seeds, uh, the old recipe did include red flowers. It does not anymore, so I don't really need them. And let me dump out some of this junk from my inventory. I'm not going to need much of that anymore. That's good for now. So put your empty terraformer blueprint in there. Put four seeds around. You get a cultivation also going to grab, um, not that I probably need it, but I'm going to grab just one glass fiber. Now I'm going to go outside and find a nice spot to lay this down, and I will be back shortly. Well, I'm figuring this is probably as good a spot as any. I hope I'm far enough away from my house here. Um, there's this big open field here. There's some trees, but not many, some grass, a nice little lake. I'm going to lay down my terraformer, let's say right there. I'm going to place down my MFSU right next to it. And I said I probably didn't need this cable. I probably could connect these guys right next to each other, but what the hey. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I should also make an on-off switch. Not that I really need to, because I'm probably going to be leaving this guy on for a bit, but what the hey. So, how do we activate this guy? Well, if we right-click, put our cultivation terraformer blueprint in our hand and right click on the terraformer it goes in there there is no interface for the terraformer at least in this version there was an IC1 and that really confused me for a bit while I was trying to figure out how to build this thing um, so now that thing's in there the only way to get it out as far as I'm aware is to either break the machine or um, if you place another one in there the one that's currently in there will pop out uh, you saw me charge up a Lapatron crystal earlier, so let's stick that guy in. And, oh, whoa, what is going on here? Look at all these flowers and things sprouting up out of nowhere. There's trees popping up. There's grass. Hey, I didn't do that, did I? No. That's right. The cultivation blueprint will plant all form of wildlife. You're going to see mushrooms pop up. You're going to see more flowers start to sprout. Look at them. They're sprouting in front of my eyes. Now, the reason I went with an MFSU is because, uh, from what I gather, the more current you put into this thing, the faster it's going to cultivate the land. So, uh, I went with the max, 512, why not? Um, not sure how long my energy crystal here is going to last. It doesn't seem to be lasting terribly long. Um, oh look, it created a pumpkin for me, how nice is that? Look at this, how quickly it's cultivating this area. Now, in the old version, my forest got ridiculously dense. Um, I don't know what this is going to turn out to be like as things start to prop up and grow, but you can see it is very quickly using energy. Uh, very, very quickly. In fact, we've already used almost that full million EU, uh, just as I was standing here talking to you guys, because we've been pumping 512 out a second, and it's almost empty. So we just used a million EU. Um, I presume that the changes to the environment are not going to go away once this thing loses power. So the power is off now, but you can see what's already happened. Tons of cool things happening around here. Look at that. How ridiculously quick that changed the area. All these trees are going to grow. Everything's going to just spring up. And if I stick more energy in, more changes will happen. And the range of this thing is actually pretty far. If we go all the way back here, we can even see, you know, some flowers and all this other cool stuff. So with that, I'm going to wrap up this Let's Play episode. I think it's a good time to do that. Um, you guys, I hope, enjoyed watching. Uh, I'll be back, hopefully, tomorrow with episode 16. And I'll, you know, probably stick some more energy into this thing and see how, uh, how good it is and see what other kind of goodies we get popping up all around us. I will also maybe check out another um, type of terraformer. Maybe I'll do the desert one or the snow one, 
Hey, if you guys want to go ahead and post comments on this YouTube video, go ahead and tell me what you'd like to see next. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll just pick somebody's comment and go with it. So for now, I'm wrapping up, and I will see you all then. Take it easy.